Hi, everyone. This is Carrick. This class is geared towards uh, finding shoulder stability in various yoga poses. Um, as athletes and, and even in everyday life, um, we often find our shoulders in vulnerable positions. So this is for anyone who has to do any kind of repeated motion where you're throwing or hitting something, you know, swinging a tennis racket, hitting a volleyball, um, throwing a ball overhead, um, pitchers, um, your, the shoulder is this very mobile joint, um, but it's also very unstable. And so in yoga, in yoga, we're constantly trying to first stabilize a joint before we stretch it out. And, and that may or may not always be possible when you're performing uh, in action in a sport or otherwise. Um, I'll tell you just for everyday uh, folks, just reaching into the back of your car to get your bag uh, from the back seat puts your arm in a really vulnerable position. The arm moves back behind you. You you open up the the shoulder, and you know you're lifting often you know five ten pounds of weight um, with your arm in a vulnerable position, and uh, that vulnerable position is what often leads to injury. So in yoga, we'll put like a little bit of stress on the on the shoulder on the joint, but then we'll stabilize. Uh, the joint so that we can build strength, we can build stability uh, under that controlled amount of tension. Okay, so let's get started. Turn to one side of your mat and move into downward facing dog. Even down dog for me is a stretch in my shoulders and I have to be careful. I have to pause to stabilize. Spread your fingers wide, um, lift the head of the arm bone. So I'm gonna say head of the arm bones a bunch of times. Um, the arm bone is the humerus right here from the elbow to the shoulder um, and the head of the arm bone right at the top. Head of the arm bone's back. What I mean by that is the arm moving towards the back plane of the body. So whether your arm's in the air, head of the arm bone back is that way. The arm's by your side, head of the arm bone back this way. Arm's out to the side, head of the arm bone back this way. So head of the arm bone back. Okay, so when I'm it's particularly in a vulnerable position when your arms are overhead because you're extending out of the socket. So now, down dog, head of the arm bones back really means up towards the ceiling. So it's kind of like I'm shrugging up towards the ceiling and I want to move the inner and the outer edges of the humerus, the head of the humerus, up towards the ceiling. So my armpits will get hollow and I'll say that a couple of times as well throughout the class. Lift the armpits up, hollow them out, lift the head of the humerus up, and then soften your heart towards the floor without popping the head of the humerus down towards the ground. So the armpits rise and the heart softens at the same time. This is going to be a key action throughout the practice. Look forward and walk your feet to the front of the mat. Inhale to lengthen and reach your heart forward. Exhale to fold. And we can practice that action in several different positions throughout the practice. Inhale to lengthen. Again, reach your chest towards the front of the mat. Exhale to fold. One more time, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Separate your feet about as wide as the mat. Unlock your knees, and we're gonna move into our first shoulder stretch. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Now, when the hands move behind the back, the head of the arm bones tend to push forward. So the front deltoids push towards uh, the front of the body. So now, with the hands behind the back, pin the tops of the shoulders back, which is up towards the ceiling, right now. So head of the arm bones lift. Now pull your shoulder blades towards your hips, reach the base of your heart towards the ground, and then lift the front of your chest towards your chin. Now as you lift the arms back, farther and farther back, it's like a seesaw. As the arm, as your hands move back, the front of the shoulders want to push forward even more. So you have to work harder to pin or lift the head of the arm bones up towards the ceiling as you reach your hands up. So the hands reaching up, are, I'm adding stress to the joint, right? And then I'm building the strength to stay safe by lifting the tops of the shoulders or the head of the arm bones up. Reach the hands high. Keep focused on keeping the head of the arm bones towards the back plane of the body. Release your hands to the ground. Heel toe your feet back to about hip width apart. Slide your right foot back into a lunge and pause. Squeeze your shins towards each other. Make your legs super strong. Keep the right hand on the ground. Let's take the left arm up. So now arms in the side plane of the body. Um, for me, this is easier to squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back 
and to draw the tops of the arm bones back. So right at the top of the shoulders, draw straight back. So I'm drawing back towards you. And then pull the shoulder blades towards each other. From your hips, stretch out through your legs, stretch out through your arms. Right? And then on the top hand, just for a moment, bring the hand forward, right? So like you're high-fiving someone. And then with the hand slightly forward, pull the shoulder head back and then draw the hand back. Good, inhale, touch both hands to the ground. Step the feet up and switch sides. I'll show you on the other side here. So twist, long lunge with the twist. All right, so as if I just take the hand back, the tendency will be there's a seesaw action. The arm moves back and you'll see my shoulder do this. It'll push forward. I'm exaggerating a lot right now, but I'll take the hand back and the shoulder pops forward, okay? So now if I bring the hand forward, it's easier for me now to draw the head of the arm bone into the socket. And I, I keep that and then I take the hand straight up. Maybe even start to take the hand back behind my head, right? But not at the expense of the front deltoid pushing forward or the head of the humerus pushing forward. Okay, so head of the humerus back, which is the main action that we're working on to provide stability in the shoulder socket. Stretch your legs and your arms all the while keeping the shoulders integrated. Inhale, touch both hands to the ground. Step both feet up to a forward bend. Inhale to lengthen, reach your heart forward. And then exhale to fold. Make your feet steady. Inhale, sweep your arms up over your head. Exhale and draw your hands to your heart. All right, so here, I'm trying to avoid this. This is head of the arm bones forward. I'm trying to get them back, okay? So whatever plane my arms are in, by my sides, out to the side, up overhead, even behind me, or in front, I always, I'm looking for this action, okay? By the way, I'm not saying that those are the actions that you're going to do when you're doing your other activities. It may not be possible to keep the head of the arm bone back completely uh, when you're throwing a baseball, when you're swinging up overhead. You're gonna do those actions the way that you need to to perform them when you're, when you're playing. Right, but while you're doing yoga, you're gonna work on, we're going to work on strengthening, stabilizing, um, finding this uh, stability in these semi-vulnerable positions, okay? All right, shoulders back, inhale and sweep your arms over your head. Unlock your knees, fold forward, touch the ground. So even as you're moving your arms now, right, sweeping the arms to the sides, keep the shoulders pinned back while you float down. So the arms are changing positions. The intention is to keep the head of the arm bones deep in the sockets. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to the top of a push-up. So here uh, in the top of the push-up, um, I can't really, unless I lift my hand off the ground to get the head of the arm bone to lift up, I can do this, right? To get the head of the arm bone back. But I can't float both of my hands off the ground so instead, what I have to do is soften my heart towards the floor. So in relation to the rest of my body, the head of the arm bones move back, which is up. So it looks something like the difference is this and this. And you can see that the shoulder, the head of the humerus, sets into the shoulder socket as I soften my heart. So we can practice that. Round your back and push the floor away, and then soften your heart towards the floor let the arm bones set, so gravity sets the arm bones in the sockets. Keep that lower to the bottom of the push-up. Here, if my, I can't do this long, if my shoulders drop below my elbows, I'm putting stress on the shoulders. That does not feel good to me. All right, so I have to keep my shoulders lifted high above my elbows to keep them safe in the best position. Shoulders back, heart forward. Exhale to down dog. Right? And then even as you're moving through those positions, the intention is to keep the head of the humerus towards the back plane of the body. So in this position, the head of the humerus up, heart soft towards the ground. Look forward, bend your knees, step or hop to the front of the mat. In this position, uh, arms up, inhale to lengthen, heart forward. Exhale to fold, steady your feet, pin the shoulders back, Inhale and sweep your arms over your head. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Good, inhale again, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold, touch the ground. Step the right foot back. 
pause. All right, so again, with the arms in the forward position, um, ideally, I would plug the arm deeper into the socket, but with my fingertips on the ground, I'm gonna have to soften my heart towards the floor to draw the arms into position. Keep that. While you're moving up, keep the shoulders, the head of the humerus, back towards the back plane of the body. Inhale and reach the arms up. So the armpits stay hollow the whole time. All right now, as I take my hands back behind my head, if I draw too far back, it'll start to push the head of the humerus forward. All right, so I wanna keep the arm bones back, the armpits hollow, and then I take my arms back and I get a nice stretch and I'm still stable in the arms. Lift your chest and curl back. One more breath. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step both feet up. Take the other leg back. Feet about hip width apart. Squeeze your shins in. Before we go up, drop your heart towards the ground. Keep the arms integrated in the sockets. Keep that. So I come up here, I'm back. Come up here, I'm back. Come over here, I'm still back. All right, arm bones back, chest high. Right, and then with the head of the arm bones back, then I can start to move deeper into my pose. Arms back behind the ears, straight arms, chest up, stretch your legs, one more breath, and then exhale, hands back to the ground. Step both feet forward to a forward bend. Inhale to lengthen, come up halfway. Exhale to fold. All right, keep the left leg forward, step the right foot back. Spin the heel flat to the ground. Inhale to warrior two. So bend the front knee over your heel. Uh, back leg straight, stretch the arms. All right, so if you bring your hands slightly forward, it's easier to draw in from the fingertips into the shoulder sockets. You pull back, I'll show you from behind really quick. Pull back this way. So with the arms out to the sides, it's just a little harder to experience that. So if you bring your hands forward to about a 45 degree angle, then you can draw from the fingertips back into the shoulder sockets, then take the arms back to the front and back of the mat. Face the same way. Now, with the left hand, take your forearm behind your head, take your right hand to your elbow, pat yourself on your upper back with your left hand, and then push your head into your forearm to open the shoulder. All right, same action here. So take the inner and the outer armpit back. You're pulling the humerus down and back towards the back plane of the body. Keep that. Here's the stress that we're gonna add to the pose. Push your head into your forearm, lift your chin, right? and then side bend to the back of the mat. And you'll feel a nice stretch. So we're adding like a controlled stress to the shoulders to stretch them and to strengthen them to, we're forcing ourselves to strengthen, to engage, to stabilize the poses. All right, straighten the front leg. Reach for the front of the mat with your left hand. Pause with your hand on your shin. Take the other hand, palm up, sorry, hand up, palm faces behind you, and then bend your elbow, reach behind your back. Okay, again, this is the, that back plane of the body as soon as I move my hand back behind me, the shoulder, I'm gonna exaggerate, there's this tendency to happen. The hand moves back, the shoulder moves forward. But I get my clasp, now this has to move back. So from your hips to your armpits, get longer through the side body. You can keep the hand on the shin, just don't lock the knee, or you can touch the ground. And then draw the top shoulder back. So I'm trying to pull my right shoulder out of my peripheral vision Get it behind me as I pull the head of the humerus deeper into the socket. Twist and look up. One more breath. And then inhale to stand. Turn the left foot in. Turn the right foot out. Back to warrior two on the second side. Bend the knee. Okay, so you can. You don't have to bring the hands forward to draw in. I just find that uh, with my hands forward, it's easier to think about the energy drawing back. I can keep my hands out to the sides here and draw the head of the arm bones deeper towards the back plane of the body. It's just a little more challenging for me in this position. So I draw back and then stretch. Right, so we always stabilize 
the joint first before we go for the biggest stretch. Head of the arm bones deep into the sockets, then stretch your arms. From the hips, stretch out through your legs. From the hips, stretch out through your fingertips. Another breath. On an inhale, straighten the front leg. We do the, oh, sorry. Let's take the shoulder stretch. Keep the front knee bent. Then the elbow. Take your forearm behind your head. Right? And then the elbow goes straight up. So use your hand, your left hand, to pull the elbow back over your head. And then side bend towards the, the straight leg. Push your head into your forearm to open the shoulder. Keep the armpit hollow, draw it back. Keep your rib cage in. Push your head into your arm to open the shoulder, to add the stretch. And then side bend towards the back of your mat. On an inhale, straighten the front leg. Reach forward with the hand, and then place your hand on your shin. Pause for one moment. The top hand goes up, palm faces behind you with the thumb pointing back. And then bend the elbow. You're going to reach back. If you can't find your thigh, like, I don't think I'm going to grab my thigh on this side, to be honest. So I have my hand just barely coming onto the right thigh from behind. This shoulder is much tighter for me. Now, and you can see my shoulder wanting to come forward. So I have to pull the shoulder head back into the socket. From your hips to your armpits, get longer. You have the option to touch the ground or to keep the hand on the shin or a prop. Squeeze both shoulder heads back. Reach your head towards the back of the mat, and then stretch your legs, stretch your side body, stretch your spine, and broaden your shoulders. Two more breaths. One more breath. And then inhale to come up. Turn both feet the to face the same direction, and then heel toe your feet in, and step to back to the front of the mat. OK. Inhale and sweep the arms again. Reach up, full stretch. Exhale and fold, touch the ground. Inhale to lengthen, reach your heart forward. Exhale, plant your hands and step back to the top of a push-up. One more time, let's practice um, integrating the arm bones into the shoulder sockets here. So rounded back, I'm, I'm disconnected here. I'm pushing the arms out of the sockets. All right, so then I soften and let gravity take over. Gravity pulls my chest towards the ground and the arms uh, get pushed into the sockets as gravity pulls on my heart. I right, keep that. Now, the head of the arm bones right here stay high. Shoulders stay high. No lower than my elbows. Lower to the bottom of the push-up. Hold here. Lift through the head of the arm bones. Top of the humerus lifts up towards the ceiling. Keep that. Then release the hips. Pull the shoulders straight back. Exhale to down dog. Let's go over that one more time. Shoulders over the wrist. So very often, I'm going to do this one time, um, I'll see students move through this part of the flow, and, and something like this will happen. And the shoulder head dips below the level of the elbows. It, it moves forward. Okay, And just for that moment, students are losing the, the head of the humerus uh, in the, towards the back plane. So here's, the, here's a better alignment, OK? Uh, elbows over the wrist, lower to the bottom of the push-up. Keep the shoulders high. Then pull straight back so my shoulders never pass the level of my elbows. They never push forward. So if I was to show you just like seated, I'm trying to avoid this. And I think we mostly recognize this as not being a great position for the shoulders. Uh, shoulder heads pop forward, so shoulders back. Okay, so you know it's good posture. All right, down dog. <laughs> Keep the head of the arm bones lifted, and melt the heart. This is also I, I'm not. My shoulders are pretty tight, so it's hard for me to overdo this and press too low. But I will sometimes see my more flexible students. Um, they'll go chest really low, and then the arms. Um, go start to move behind the head. So lift the, the upper arms behind the head and then soften the heart towards the ground rather than just sort of dumping the, um, the top of the humerus low. Okay, so you keep the head of the arm bones lifted above the head 
rather than pushing them low towards the ground. All right, stretch your arms from your heart, push out through your hands. From your heart, lift back through your hips. Just another breath. And then come down to your knees. Uh, from hands and knees, walk your hands all the way forward and put your forehead on the ground. All right, hips centered over the knees. Push your hands down so much that your armpits lift up. Your head might lift up a little bit too. Keep the armpits lifted. You can put your head back down and then press your chest towards the floor. Draw your rib cage in so you're not collapsing in the middle back. Keep the armpits lifted high and melt your heart. Press your chest towards the ground. You can change this position and make it a little more intense by putting the elbows down, taking your hands behind your head in prayer. Drag your knees and your elbows towards each other. Your rib cage will lift up. The arm bones will lift up. Keep that action of the armpits lifting high and then drop your heart towards the ground. A couple of breaths. Okay, and then we're going to take these actions into probably one of the more vulnerable positions. We're going to take the arms in the overhead position and we're going to put weight. Um, so we're going to go upside down up against a wall. So, um, yeah, I'm going to suggest using the wall. So we can focus on, we're not, we don't have to focus on balance. Um, we're just going to put weight on the shoulders in that overhead position. Um, remember, okay, so I'm, I'm right side up, but imagine I'm upside down. The action is going to be to draw the head of the humerus towards the back plane of the body while you're pushing out, okay? Um, as opposed to just kind of pushing everything forward and winging the arm back, right? So creating that stability in the handstand. All right, so find a wall. Uh, hands about outer shoulder width apart. And I'm just gonna kick up to the wall. Actually, I'll do this first. You can start with hands and knees on the floor, hands about as wide as your outer shoulders and knees about hip width apart. All right, and then shoulders over the wrists and hips over the knees. It might feel a little close, but this is about the right spacing. All right, lift your knees off the ground, and you're, now you're in a position where your arms are in the overhead plane. So for the, my arms to stay back towards the back plane of the body, I'm really moving the top of my arms towards you, okay, away from the wall. And then I'm pressing my chest towards the wall. Okay, so armpits away from the wall, chest towards the wall in this position. You can lift one leg up. It'll be easier on the shoulders, actually. Okay, so armpits away from the wall, chest towards the wall. And then from your heart, now push out through your hands and push up through the lifted foot. Okay, you can try both sides. If you do not kick up to the wall, you can continue to practice with one or both feet on the wall, the L shape. Or if you do kick up to the wall, I'm going to turn around to kick up. All right, so hands outer shoulder width apart. I like to be, actually for this exercise, let's call it one hand length away from the wall. So I'm about the, the length of my own hands from the wall. I'm not right up against it. All right, and then when I kick up, okay, for this one, uh, drop your head, and then the inner armpits draw back towards the wall if, you're, if your back is to the wall and then your chest presses forward. And then from the heart, push out through the hands and stretch up through the heels. A couple of breaths. Okay, so if you want to work on either of those two positions, um, great way to strengthen the shoulders um, and practice being in a semi-vulnerable position and practicing creating stability uh, in, the, in the joint, in the shoulder, okay? Um, so you can do that, uh, pause and practice that, or if you're ready to move on, um, come back to your mat and lie on your back, bend your elbows and point your fingers to the sky. So just another place that we can, another position in which we can practice shoulder stability pinning the head of the humerus, in this case, into the ground. All right, bend your elbows and point your palms at each other. Inhale, lift your hips and your chest. 
push your head and shoulders into the mat, pin them to the mat. The upper back and your neck will arch away from the floor. And then really getting the humerus to push back as much as possible and then allowing the spine to arch here and the neck to arch. Um, another place that you can potentially practice this, um, if any of you drive at all, um, when I'm in my car with my hands on the steering wheel, I'll practice drawing the head of the arm bones back and pinning them back. Um, and then just you know, engaging all of the muscles that help me to, um, to keep good alignment and uh, good posture. So it's, it's a very similar position, right? The, this driving position to what you're doing in bridge pose. Let's do one more. Push your feet, head and shoulders down into the mat. Lift your hips and your chest. Arch your upper back away from the floor. Two more breaths. One more breath. And then come down and rest. Um, Let's just do one more shoulder stretch. I'm gonna flip you back over and crawl your right hand out to the right. Um, push the palm down, spread your fingers wide, and then you're gonna roll your body weight onto the shoulder, which this is the stress that we're putting on the shoulder, your body weight on the shoulder. Make sure that your, the head of the arm bone is back behind your head. Okay, if you're right on top of it, it's not gonna feel great. So walk the hand back, walk the shoulder back, and then you're gonna turn on to one side. You can bend the left knee and place your foot behind your knee. On the opposite arm, my left arm, I have it right in front of my chest. Lift your head and take your head back. Now you can make the pose more intense by doing just that, head lifted and back, and then chest forward. If that's too much, if that's too much stress on the front deltoid, you can put your head down and even lean away from the, the straight arm. Okay, let's go back, let's shift to the other side. So crawl the left hand out to the left. Crawl the, sh the top of the arm behind you. Crawl the hand back and then place the right hand right in front of your chest. Lift your head and take your head and shoulders back. So pin both shoulders back and you'll feel that opening in the front deltoid, um, possibly the upper pectoral muscles. Take your head back for more. Put your head down for less. One more breath. And then inhale to the middle. Okay, I'm gonna push up. If you wanna take a quick break, uh, flip over, lie on your back for Shavasana. Um, so these are just some ways to find stability in the yoga practice for your shoulders. Uh, one of the main ways is really to be aware of the position of the humerus in relation to the, the shoulder girdle. And the idea is to continuously keep the head of the humerus towards the back plane of the body. And you can do this in the poses that um, we did in this practice. You can, do, you can practice the head of the arm bone back really in every yoga pose. Um, and even if the yoga pose tends to pull you forward, I can't really think of which poses would do that, but you can practice moving the head of the arm bones back. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope this gives you something to work on. Um, thank you for practicing with me. I will see you next time.